Hey guys, welcome back to Life 101. Hope you're having a fantastic day today. We had more messages about yesterday's video than we've had over anything we've done before. It was about shadow work. Like I said yesterday, we're going to go a little deeper today. Demons, shadows, skeletons in the closet. We all have them. But you just can't get rid of your shadow, no matter how much you run away from it. Because when the sun shines brighter, the shadow is even more apparent. So today, we're going to take a deeper dive into shadow work, part two, on today's Life 101. Everyone carries a dark side, even if we don't admit it. Shadow work can sound scary, and some parts of it can be a little uncomfortable, but it's, un it's necessary work to uncover the true joy and peace in your life. Think of it like Star Wars. If we let our dark side run rampant through our lives, it's going to feel chaotic. This can manifest as issues with mental health, disease, feelings of self-worth, scarcity mindset, addiction, and so many other issues that can affect the overall quality of your life. Our shadow self often harms our life. Sometimes the ways are not conscious to us. It's a habitual reaction to certain places, people, and things. Our shadow blocks us from acting in our own greatest good, and it can prevent us from reaching our true potential. And that is scary not reaching our true potential in life. The idea of the shadow self was conceived, like I said, by Carl Jung, a very famous 20th century psychologist from Switzerland. Now, in his field, often referred to as shadow work, that word, or those words, mean the hidden parts of our being. Now, it could be parts of ourselves that we're trying to repress because they make us feel sad or wounded. It's the side we do not show society like, you know, when we're at work or school. It can also indicate how we internally perceive ourselves, maybe being weak or in pain, and we feel the need to hide these parts of ourselves. The integration of the shadow self must be done so we can live in a balanced way. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life, and you're going to call it fate. That's a famous quote from Jung. We often go through our lives trying to hide those shadows. It's what society tells us to do. At some point, we have to discover what pain really is because we've been suppressing it for too long. It's happened since we were children. And you've done it all through your childhood. We start to tell ourselves a story that it's not okay for anyone to know our, our struggles and our battles. And we have to be good. And that any negative emotions that we feel just aren't right. Now, looking back, we will see those internal battles as something that helped us move forward to that vision of success. We would never know our greatest success if we didn't fight our greatest battles. So what does this mean? It means the shadow must be acknowledged. This is the basis of shadow work. It's essential to a fully lived life. If you just focus on the good side of life, that which feels great, joyful, and easy, life is going to be very one-sided and it's going to be lacking in depth. Classic shadow signs are anger, blame, laziness, but they can also be insecurity, codependency, or sometimes independence. Life is a multifaceted experience that needs to be experienced from all angles to be experienced and understood fully. The good, the bad, the light, the dark, the, the pretty, the ugly, and all the gray areas in between. If you continue to bury your shadows, you're going to feel fractured. You're going to feel compartmentalized. You, can, you will never move past them to see what else your life has to offer. So it's time to confront your shadow. The pain and suffering we see in the world around us is often mirrored by our internal suffering. We all have these aspects within us within us in one way or another. 
let's say the road you take to work each day is full of litter. Now you can take action to work with the town, inform people not to litter and enforce the solution, or you can just continue to bitch about it and it can continue to pile up on the roadside. The same goes true with our internal dialogue. If our minds and emotions become polluted, then we may not be able to think clearly. Our emotions may, may lead us astray and cause us to act out unknowingly. An internal cleanup must happen, as, as well as a rewiring of our internal dialogue. Just like that situation with the road, if we ignore the problems all around us in everyday lives, the pain and suffering is going to continue. It's only in facing our difficulties that true change can be made. And the hope of peace can prevail inside and out. Now, shadow work may seem counterintuitive because you have to face your pain instead of running away from it. But it works by allowing yourself to feel and understand the painful aspects of yourself until they become fully integrated instead of treated like a castaway. It takes courage and an open heart which are valuable tools to learn along the way. So why do you want to master your shadow self? Well, we can start to work with that side to create positive change in our life. That's a huge reason right there. It's a form of self-examination. We never take any time to examine the person within. Shadow work is an introspective psychological practice that anyone can do and it can lead to more fulfilling lives. When working with the shadow, you may have moments of awakening that lead to greater authenticity, creativity, and emotional freedom. Other benefits of shadow work include improved relationships, understanding yourself and accepting others, increased energy, better communication with others, and the ability to set ground rules in your life. And of course, to stop the cycle of self-destruction, to engage fully with the broad spectrum of life. Why live such a tiny sliver of what this life can be? Live your best life. You can write, you can journal. It's one of the best tools you can use to start when engaging in shadow work. So what I want you to do today, just start journaling and keeping track of your thoughts. It's a way to, to keep track of them, and you begin to come become aware of your unconscious self. Now, this could include journaling about specific things and ways you react. You will begin to see if there's a recurrent emotion or a behavioral pattern in your life. Once you begin to recognize these patterns, you can then increase your internal dialogue in the moment. It's like having a conversation with yourself, and it doesn't mean you're crazy. Or you can use meditation, and I talk about this all the time. These types of shadow work include particular archetypes that define the shadow parts of yourself, so you can better understand them. For example, maybe you're conditioned to overwork yourself when it comes to your job. You bring problems home. You won't shut it off. You work when unnecessary. What is the opposite of that? Allowing yourself to relax and let go of your problems. If you can define this spot side of yourself, the one that you're repressing, you can become aware of moments when you need to take it easy. Mental suffering becomes easier to diagnose. In the end, you will find more peace with your job. Through this work, you can decipher and decide which pattern and behavior no longer serves you. And then you can move forward with enhanced awareness. Instead of reacting to life all the time, playing its game, you can respond to life instead. You don't have to run away from painful experiences. They are simply tools that are begging for growth. Shadow work helps us to accept that which we found unacceptable so that real change, healing, and transformation can occur. One of the most important things to remember when engaging with shadow work is to be compassionate with yourself. Not all those answers are gonna come right away. So wherever you are in the process, allow yourself to accept all the parts of yourself, shadow and light alike. 
the transmutation of emotional pain and discomfort with conscious awareness is the nectar that precedes any transformation. It's like Rumi said, your task is not to seek love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. Now, tomorrow, we're going to go deeper, and I'm going to give you a growth task that you can do right away to begin working on your shadow. But today, just try journaling. Spend five or 10 minutes and write down your thoughts. Getting it out of your head and onto paper makes a difference. Sometimes when something comes out of your head and it's exposed to the light of day, it vanishes. It no longer holds any power over you. And that's exciting. If you've not joined our Facebook group, now's the time. It's a group of like-minded people. We're all supporting and empowering each other. In turn, we empower ourselves. It's a never-ending cycle of abundance uh, in every area of your life. So join us at facebook.com slash groups slash Taylor Webb. Also, if you'd like a free copy of our newest ebook, it's Five Steps to the Perfect Mindset. You can find that for a very limited time at successsecrets.net. You can download your free copy. It is our gift to you. Again, you want to start working on that mindset. Changing your life begins with little steps. First is realizing that you want to make a change and knowing that there's so much more out there than you ever realize. So grab your copy today, Five Steps to the Perfect Mindset, successsecrets.net. Like I said, I'll be back tomorrow with a growth task that you are going to love and it's really going to start getting you in touch with yourself. That's all I got for you today. It is a beautiful day no matter where you are in the world because every day is a beautiful day that we're alive and well. So go out and enjoy it. And remember, don't worry, be happy and feel good. I'll see you tomorrow.